Coral reefs are among the most diverse and complex ecosystems in the world. But reefs worldwide are facing increasing pressures, like more frequent and severe mass beaching events caused by warming seas as well as local human-caused stressors. Mapping and identifying habitat that represents important biodiversity hotspots is important for coastal communities that rely on healthy reef fish populations for food, tourism and culture because it can help to inform urgently needed management actions to sustain healthy reefs and healthy coastal communities. Such actions could include deciding which areas should be protected from fishing. Management information is needed across large geographic areas, but collecting data needed to inform decisions can be costly and take a long time, especially when the data are collected using in situ field projects. Therefore, it's essential to develop cost-effective methods of identifying marine areas that should be a priority for protection. Remote sensing technology has become increasingly important in mapping, monitoring and understanding global marine systems. Maps of the marine environment can show where different types of habitat are found. However, the 3D structure and complexity of the seascape also has an impact on the type of marine communities that that habitat can support. For instance, coral reef areas with greater three-dimensional structure provide fish with more refuge from predation, compared to areas with smaller or fewer amounts of corals. So being able to find these important safe havens for fish is crucial to identifying biodiversity hotspots, areas of greater potential fish biomass and coral reef locations to prioritise as areas of high conservation value. A recent paper in Remote Sensing in Ecology and Conservation looked at combining both 2D and 3D seascape models to improve the method for identifying reef locations that should be a priority for management actions. Fish surveys in the main Hawaiian islands were conducted at 625 sites. The selected areas had a variety of habitat types, ranging from extensive coral to large boulder habitat to seagrass beds and also represented a range of management regimes, human population pressures and shoreline exposure. Some were in marine protected areas. Divers surveyed the amount of fish, species diversity and biomass in each of these 625 sites. Two-dimensional habitat maps were created for each site from satellite images and three-dimensional maps were created using LIDAR. LIDAR, Light Detection and Ranging, is a remote sensing technology that can be used to measure high density depth measurements of the seafloor and from this scientists can construct a 3D model of the seafloor habitat. One laser pulse reflects back off the surface of the ocean and is picked up by a sensor which can tell how far away it is by how long the laser beam took to come back. A second laser pulse penetrates to the seafloor and reflects back to the sensor. Because we know the speed of light, the time difference between the ocean surface return and seafloor return can help to measure seafloor depth. Then the 3D shape of the seafloor can be recreated by integrating many of these LiDAR depth soundings. LiDAR is commonly used to make high resolution maps that also show the 3D structure of the landscape. Researchers combine these data to work out how good just 2D, just 3D and combined 2D and 3D models were at predicting fish assemblages so that's diversity, biomass and density. It was concluded that three-dimensional LiDAR combined with two-dimensional satellite data supported more robust predictions of fish assemblages than 2D or 3D alone. The habitat complexity which was picked up with LiDAR was significant in their models, as areas with extensive habitat complexity provide fish more refuge from predation, and these areas often have more fish density, diversity and biomass. Areas in the study site that were protected from fishing showed more fish biomass. Therefore, creating marine protected areas in locations with complex 3D reef structures should be a management priority. And remote sensing technology can help coral reef managers identify these important areas along our coastlines. Using these remote sensing methods could help inform marine management decisions and could also advance seascape ecology by providing a cost-effective approach to forecasting potential impacts to fish communities caused by changes to the reefs, for example through hurricanes, human activity, climate change and ocean acidification. This will help us to sustain and protect our coral reefs.